Surviving in IT, surviving in IT with .NET Core 3.1 Part 1, uh, 2020, and what we're doing is creating a monthly financial report. Here are what we're going to do in this video. We're going to create a database. We're going to put some dummy financial data that we want to display as monthly data. Create a monthly table for dynamically generating that monthly data, and then connecting that monthly data and the financial data in the stored procedure. Then we're going to create an ASP.NET Core API, add entity framework, use Postman to display that data, add Swagger document to API, adding Siri log to the API, creating ASP.NET Core 3.1 MVC app and consume that API and display that in a database table. So I really like this little video here and uh, because it covers so many details we're just going to have a few methods. It's going to be a very small API and it's going to quickly go through how to get things up and running with all these elements that we just spoke about. So with that let's start the demo by creating the database. All right, I'm going to go here to new database, and we're going to call this Works database. We'll keep all the default settings. Hit OK. And in here, we'll go to tables. Add a new table. And in here, we'll go ahead and quickly create this database, and we'll have this as a. Uh, orders So you can see me set it as an identity. There you go. Entity. I'll take it back down here for it. And we'll say product. And the date of sale. Okay. And we'll go ahead and save that. So that's the sale order table. Voila! That's us creating the table. Okay, so there are many methods of doing this and I want to be clear that this is not a fully functional database or any sort of relational database. I'm just using this table to create this example. 
and so I'm using the one sales order table and this is how I chose to create an order I have a variable up here named product and cost and what I will do is just add different products here and it'll create one for each month so I don't know uh, hot dogs uh, and, oh, well, 5.55 and I'll run it and I'll create a hot dog for each month uh, uh, um, and we'll check here in the sales order table and at one point I created case water hot dogs and so I'm just populating the data like this so that we could, um, you know, have some changes in there and probably go ahead and comment out some stuff and say, okay, we'll have hot dogs for these months, but I'll miss those and we'll put, uh, I don't know. Pancake mix. And just do random stuff like that where yeah we'll just have hot dogs for that turn but if you look here you know it's pancake mix and I'm just gonna do random varieties like that comment uncomment out and then we will line all this data up in a monthly way next so thank you very much Now this, what I'm showing here, is a little trick I learned, I think from someone on stock, Stack Overflow, and, and so what we're gonna do is just have a sequence ID here to be our primary key. You know, every field requires a primary key action right here, every, every table. I don't really have a need for it. And then we're going to create a month number. Mm -hmm. uh, and that'll be an integer. And table and so what we're gonna do here is let me refresh here and uh, this particular time I'm gonna hit edit and just enter the values I want in there and so this will start off with a zero and So I'll just go down here and type all these values in here and let you know why I'm doing it in a few seconds. So right here, you can see the example of how we have the numbers here. And what we're going to do is automatically generate monthly information uh, based on these values and then connect them together with the data in the sales order and I just like this method because um, I've gotten good results from it at work and different places I've worked at so I'm gonna show you this and so now we're gonna connect all this data so 
So now we've gotten to the end of this segment. And what we have here in this query is we have the start date and the end date, which covers the entire year. And from that, we create this query. And this gives us this result. This is the first day of every month. This is the month number from 1 to 12. This is the abbreviated version of the months and the year. And we're going to stop right here to make this like really short. But I'm going to then connect this information to our financial data in our sales order table to give you a nice clean breakdown of monthly data. And so to get a quick demonstration of here, Let's say it was, let's say um, the user puts in the, the year 2019, and this is specifically for showing monthly data uh, for a specific year, and everything just remains the same, except now you know which year everything's running at. So that's what I really like about this, that I can have these data showing up this data showing up in graphs and in charts and in data and then I will give you a nice layout right here so we're gonna stop here and then I'll get into that portion on our next video thank you very much